I just finished watching It and I'm totally blanking on the director now and the year. I think it's 2017. That's a little bit embarrassing, but it is based on the novel by Stephen King, of course, very famous author. And um, this is one that I was, uh, so this is a movie that I was going into expecting to give it like a 10 out of 10. Um, but I actually noticed a little more flaws on my third time watching it. You know, the first time I watched it was with my friend, it was on a phone screen didn't pay a lot of attention. The second time I watched it, I really respected it. I was like, damn, this is a good story, an interesting universe. Third time I watched it, it's still good, but um, the flaws are starting to peer out of me a little bit more, so I'm gonna have to place more emphasis on them, even though I do think it's a great film and I definitely recommend it to you. Um, so, excuse me for not remembering everyone's names. Um, okay, so basically Georgie is this innocent little kid and he goes missing and it turns out that it's a creature, basically this all-powerful, omniscient creature that returns every, was it 27 years, um, out of hibernation to feed on children. And it's important to note that um, the more afraid his prey are, the, taste, the, the better they taste, I guess. And it kind of seems by the end of it that he's not even able to eat them at all if they're not scared. That's important to know because otherwise the villains... Um, you know, actions wouldn't make any sense in this movie because he's just toying with them the entire time. So it's important to know that he's trying to make them scared. That's his objective. And um, his brother, what was his brother's name? I already forget. I mean, the children, they all kind of just mix into one. You know, there's Beverly, the girl. There's Mike, the black one. There's the Stranger Things kid. There's the one that's really afraid of diseases, um, there's the fat one, the, this is, uh, what I'm doing right now is reminding me of what Michael Scott did in the office when he's trying to like give the seminars to those people, he's like, this is how you name associate people, shorty, beardy, fatty, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, there's just, there's too many of them, they don't have like, ex they're not extremely developed or anything, so, they're just kind of one big clump. I kind of consider them all one big protagonist. The group, the Losers Club as a whole is kind of just one big protagonist. Um, they all have their own little fears, but um, they're not that important. Like, for example, Mike's parents being burned alive is just kind of thrown in there, and it's not that consequential. So, my biggest issue with this movie is the quirks and the oddities. There's too many of them. If I was making a film myself, I would definitely be throwing in little quirks in there. Like, you can't help it, right? As, like, a director, you, there's just so many ideas you have in your head. But too many of them made it to the, like, past the cutting floor. There's just too many quirks, and we'll, I'll discuss these quirks more later. But um, let's start off with what I like, okay? So, I personally love this story. I don't care that it's a horror movie. I watched this one for the story. Um, I really like the universe. I think, it, I mean... For the most part, I think it's a really Pennywise specifically, not really it. I, I like Pennywise as an antagonist. I think it's kind of a dumb, you know, I've seen the second movie, so I don't really like where it goes, but I think Pennywise the Clowns, Bill Skarsgård is a fantastic antagonist, amazing performance, like Heath Ledger Joker material for sure. Um, love the soundtrack. I think the pacing's pretty decent. Uh, for a horror movie, it's actually pretty vibrant, colorful and bright and pretty sunny for the most part, so I like that. I like all the little Easter eggs hidden everywhere. You can like, if you pay attention to the background, you'll constantly see like Pennywise's influencing things in the shots and the scenes. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and I also, I think this movie's biggest strength is the fact that the children, until the end, don't have plot armor. So basically, in most Hollywood movies, children are immune to violence, murder, blood, etc. All kinds of subject matter like that, but in this, they're dropping F-bombs, they're swearing, um, they're making sexual innuendos. Uh, the, the youngest of all the children literally gets his, you know, his arm eaten off in a, most, in a very graphic and shocking scene. So the fact that children are able to die, as weird as that sounds, like I don't like saying that, that's the movie's biggest strength because that's what sets us apart from other horror movies, the fact that the children are not immune. Um, I haven't watched a lot of horror, so maybe this is a more common thing that I realize, but personally, I watch this because of the Hollywood blockbuster. That's the main reason I watch it. I don't really watch horror specifically. Um, so I just thought that was unique. I'd never seen, you know, like in, for example, if you play Grand Theft Auto games, there's not a single child anywhere. You know, that's just the culture we live in, right? So the fact that this movie kind of approaches that and um, is willing to create such shocking material, 
it plays on the viewer's expectations and weaknesses a lot, so I thought that was really cool. And I like the unsettling vibe. I wouldn't say this, is, this isn't a movie that scares me at all, um, but it is unsettling, you know, if that makes sense. So I, I think that's a nice tone for it as well. So let's hop, let's hop into what didn't work. And that's a lot of praise. I feel like I, I praised it more than I did with most movies. Because I, honestly, I thought I was going to give this a 10, but I'm definitely not. Um, so let's go into the quirks and oddities. So, you know, there's just, there's too many for me to digest, basically. Like, from, you've got, you know, somewhat necessary things like Mike's parents being burned alive. Because if that wasn't there there would literally be nothing about Mike of any interest, right? He becomes more important in the second movie, but there's literally nothing to him if, if not for that. And um, you've got other necessary quirks like the fat boy um, being obsessed with dairy history, being the new guy. you got the love triangle. It's another little quirk thing. Like, you've got some necessary things in there, and those are all quirks and oddities like every movie has. But then there's just a, some straight-up unnecessary ones that just totally make me question things and pull me out. Um, for example... What's with the Molly, or sorry, Molly, I'm Molly Ringwald, Breakfast Club. I mean, she looks exactly, they even make a reference. She looks exactly like her, so. Um, what, Beverly, okay, Beverly. What's with Beverly's being slut-shamed? What's with the Beverly's hair? I mean, clearly the hair has a meaning. I just, it totally went over me. The blood, obviously, is has a huge meaning. I wouldn't have cut that. Um, the blood's obviously with, like, you know, growing into a woman and being, you know, the periods and stuff. So it's, you know, this, this movie does have some interesting ideas, but sorry, let me get more in focus here. So I don't understand why Molly's dad had to be such an intolerable, disturbingly creepy dad. We already, ha it's already a super disturbing and creepy movie. You know, I don't need that extra element that literally adds nothing. Um, so yeah, I didn't care for that at all. I don't know. I, it was just hard to watch those scenes. It's not like, you know, it's not like impressing me with how edgy they're being. It's like, what the hell are you doing, you know? So Molly's dad, just way over the top, edgy. Um, didn't, didn't get the whole emphasis on, um, sorry, Molly. <laughs> Whatever, we're going to call her Molly now. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff with Beverly that just didn't need to be there, I think. Um, she was already the one girl of the group, so she already has, like, a unique role, if you know what I mean. So there's just too many oddities with her. Um, it's not her fault, obviously. It's just, yeah, I don't get that. The hair and the dad is just, just terrible. Um, the other antagonist, what's his name? The bully. The psychopathic bully guy. You already have a psychopathic lunatic in this movie, Pennywise. Why do you need a second one? His, his involvement in this movie makes no sense to me. It just feels like the movie's trying to be overly edgy. You know, carving something into that. You know, carving his uh, initials into... The, the boy was just a little bit over the top, you know, it's a very extreme movie, but like, there's some times where it's just a little bit too extreme, like, you're already extreme enough, you don't need to try and impress me anymore. So, it just come off a little bit too much at times. Um, so yeah, I just, I would have cut him from the movie entirely. Just that one bully, you could have kept the other bullies in, but that one bully should have been out of the movie. Why does Pennywise feel the need to get the bully to murder his father? Honestly, couldn't tell you. Um, Pennywise, why does he want to recruit him to do the dirty work for him at the end of the finale? I mean, I guess that makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, you're, you're an omniscient, all-powerful deity. Do you really need some random kid to do your dirty work, dirty work for you? Maybe it's one more meal for you, but that kid's obviously not going to be as afraid of you. So, And wouldn't you get a taste of your meal if you just killed the kids yourself instead of getting some bully to do it? There's just a mil there's a million oddities like that, okay? I don't know why, um, God, I wish I remembered their names. Why is that one background kid kind of, like, why, why does he have this woman, this weird looking woman? She was probably the scariest part of the movie for me just because of how jarring she looked. She looked like she was out of, like, a creepypasta. Um, like, why her? What's, they keep ma making reference to her. And it's like, what's so special about her? Is that, that's just Pennywise transforming himself, right? Morphing himself, but like, why? Why, what's with the specific fears? Like, obviously, Beverly's gonna be afraid of blood. That makes sense. I mean, they literally show her buying tan packs. I think it's pretty obvious in your face. Um, you got the kid with the disease guy. I mean, I didn't care for the, the appearance of the disease guy, but that makes sense as well, the disease. I mean, the, they don't play on the burning victim, um, like, at all. 
uh, Finn, or Finn Wolfhard, whatever, Richie. Richie is, um, you know, his fears, of course, clowns, and Pennywise morphed into Pennywise because he just likes that appearance. He didn't know that one kid is afraid of clowns. So that feels like a screenwriter's tacked on decision where he's like, oh shit, we forgot to, we forgot to give a specific scene to Richie. Let's just say he's afraid of clowns. That will just, you know, that will fit. Nobody will question that. Um, so there's just so many little, there's so many little things introduced that don't go anywhere. You know, like Beverly murders her father, you know, obviously in self-defense and whatnot. But like, shouldn't that leave a mental scar on her? Shouldn't she be crying for the rest of the movie? How are these kids not afraid? Um, you know, by the end of the movie, that's, that's another problem I have is It. I like Pennywise as an antagonist, but It as a creature, the abilities he has, he comes off as a little bit incompetent. Like, he spends the entire movie toying with his prey, which I'll suspend my disbelief for on the basis of he wants them to be afraid. But by the end of it, he's just incompetent. Like, seriously, these kid, these are a bunch of kids wielding a bunch of makeshift weapons. Just take them down already. What are you doing? Like, you spent the entire movie toying with them. Just take them out now. So, you know, it's like his weakness is stairs and doors. Like, just close a door on him and you're fine. So yeah, there are some of my criticisms for it. I think they're well, I, th I have no shame in, I know people love this movie, but I have no shame in um, criticizing. I think those are just blatant errors. Sorry if I had like a bit of, I feel like I gave a little bit of a disrespectful uh, review at some times. It wasn't my intention. I just don't know how to put my thoughts together in this one. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's a good movie. I definitely will watch it again. I like it a lot for the story, for the universe. I like the, how unsettling it is. I like how ambitious it is, but I just, I don't really like the ending. I know that's like the joke with, um, Steven. No, I've already forgot his name. See, this is, this is, my brain goes a little bit crazy sometimes. So yeah, it four out of five. I do recommend it. It's a good movie. It just has some, you know, it's got some screenwriter problems because it's a, it's a chapter one of a two-part story, so they have to end it somehow, right? 